Okay, hello everyone. So today we'll be revising dimension and dimensional analysis. So first of all, you know, I'll learn the basics again, then I'll move to dimensional analysis. So what are basically dimensions that we're going to discuss now? So in physics, we have some base quantities. The meaning of base quantities is that all the formulas of physics have been derived from this seven base units. So these are the base units and the formulas which are derived with the help of these base units are called as derived units. So we have seven base units in physics. It is length, mass, time, current, temperature, luminous intensity and amount of substance. You have to remember SI unit of all and how we will represent dimensions of all. So length will be represented by L, mass will be represented by M, time will be represented by T, current will be represented by ampere that is A, temperature will be represented by Kelvin, luminous intensity will be represented by candela. So what we'll do is we'll write CD, amount of substance will be represented by MOL that is mole. So these are the seven base units and then we have two other units that is radian and steradian. So radian is 2D angle, steradian is 3D angle. So there are seven plus two. So seven base units are there and two angles are there. So with the help of the seven plus two units, we can derive all the formulas of physics. So how will we derive? We are going to look in the next slide. So suppose formula for area is length into breadth. So A is L into B. L is length. Breadth is also length because breadth is a distance. Length is also distance. So L into L. So dimension of area is L square. So area, formula of area can be derived with the help of only one base unit. That is length. Similarly, velocity is displacement by time. Displacement is length. T is time. So L upon T is LT inverse. So dimension of velocity basically depends on two base units, length and time. Similarly, we have acceleration. So acceleration is basically what? Velocity divided by time. Velocity we have already derived. That is LT minus one. T is time T. So this T will go on the numerator side. It will become LT minus two. So acceleration, dimension of acceleration depends on two base units, that is length and time. Similarly, formula for force is mass into acceleration. We have already derived dimension for acceleration. For dimension of acceleration is LT minus 2 and dimension of M, that is mass is M. So dimension of force depends on three base quantities, that is mass, length and time. Similarly, we have another formula for pressure. Pressure is force divided by area. Dimension of force we have already derived area is L square. So it will be M L minus 1 T minus 2. So this is a way you have to find out dimension of any derived quantity. So all these are derived quantities area, velocity, acceleration, force, pressure. So we have you know many derived quantities but base quantities are 7 plus there are two angle there radian and steradian. So you have to remember the formulas to find out dimension. So with time, you will, you know, you will learn many formulas in physics. But for this chapter, for right moment of time, you have to only learn the basic formulas. That is area, velocity, acceleration, force, pressure, momentum is there or any other formula that you have read in 9th or 10th class. Okay, so moving forward. Suppose I want to find dimension of kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is half mv square. Remember that all numbers are dimensionless. Numbers means 2, 3, 4, 5, like pi. So numbers will be dimensionless, not constants. Suppose g. So g is acceleration due to gravity. So g is acceleration, so it will have dimension, the number half. So the number half in the formula will represent nothing. So half will have no dimension. Dimension of m is mass, velocity is lt minus 1, and square of lt minus 1, so ml2, t minus 2. Similarly, potential energy is mgh. M is mass, G is acceleration due to gravity. So you have to put dimension of acceleration. H is height, that is length. So dimension of potential energy is ML2 T minus 2. You can look carefully that dimension of kinetic energy and potential energy is same. So you have to remember that in physics, multiple quantities can have same dimension, but the meaning of the quantities can be different. Okay. Similarly, Current is basically charge divided by time taken. So charge is current into time. So current is ampere, T is time. So dimension of charge is AT. Okay, similarly, if I ask you what will be the dimension of resistance, then you have to find out. 
Suppose work is V into Q. This formula you have already revised in 10th class that work is potential difference into charge. So you can find dimension of potential from this formula and putting dimension is Ohm's law. You can find out dimension of resistance. So this is your homework to find out dimension of resistance. Okay, now coming to dimensional analysis. Now remember one thing, if I'll ask you, what will be the value of 2 kg plus 3 kg? So you will say 5 kg. So mass added with mass will gives you mass. So mass plus mass will gives you mass. Similarly, if I ask you what will be 2 kg plus 3 meter? So you can't add mass and length. So length will add up with length to form length. Similarly, L square will add up with L square to form L square. So if A plus B equal to C, the dimension of A, B and C will be same because mass can only be added in mass and the resultant will also be mass. Similarly, area can only be added in area and resultant will be area. So suppose X is equal to A plus BT. This is the equation and dimension of X is length and T is time. So you have to find out dimension of A and B. So X is length. It means length plus length will give you length. So A will be length and BT overall will be length. So BT will be length. T will go downward. So B will be LT minus one. So you have to find out dimension of different quantities by using this kind of linear equations. Now suppose sine theta is perpendicular by height. Remember perpendicular is length. Hypo is also length. So length will be cancelled with length and sine theta will be dimensionless. Similarly, theta will also be dimensionless. That we will discuss in upcoming slides that how theta can be dimensionless. But you remember that theta will also be dimensionless. So if x equal to sine by, now we have already seen that sine theta is dimensionless. So sine is dimensionless. So x will be dimensionless and theta is also dimensionless. So b into y will be dimensionless. So by can be put equal to 1. Dimensionless quantities can be put equal to 1. So the y will go downward. So b will be l inverse. So dimension of b will be l inverse. Similarly, you have to remember this thing that if y equal to e raised to power x, so anything power to e will be dimensionless. So y equal to 2 raised to power p, anything power to 2. Suppose it is 3 raised to power p or 4 raised to power p or 5 raised to power power p. The powers will be dimensionless because they will be numbers. Similarly for this equation, suppose we have x equal to a plus t upon b plus y. Dimension of t is time and y is length. You have to find dimension of a, b and x. Now see, t is time. So time can only be added to time since we are adding a plus t. So a will be time. Similarly, y is length. So length can only be added to length. So b will also b will be length. So dimension of a will be time and length of b will be length. So t plus t will be t. L plus L will be L. So x will be t by L. That is TL inverse. Similarly, y equal to x sine a plus bt. You have been given that x is length. T is time. So you have to find out dimension of a, b and y. See, a plus bt is dimensionless. So dimensionless plus dimensionless will be dimensionless. So A will be dimensionless. Similarly, BT will be dimensionless. So BT is 1. So B will be T inverse. Now overall sign is dimensionless. We have already proved that. So Y will be equal to X into 1 because sign function is dimensionless. So Y will also be equal to length. Okay. Now remember this thing that if N is given that N is number of turns per unit length. So N can be written as number of turns divided by length, but number is dimension length, dimension less. So dimension of n will be L inverse. That is one upon L N inverse. And suppose N is given to be number of turns per unit area. So N will be number of turns divided by area. N is dimension less, area is L square. So dimension of N will be L raised to power minus two. Now what you have to do is I'll be sending a quiz uh, with this lecture that you have to submit. Uh, and if you have any doubt, you can send me on WhatsApp. Okay, have a great day.